Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage. I'm Leslie Watkins and today is Watercolor Wednesday. So we are seeing signs of spring here at last in Northwest Connecticut. Today, I don't know if you can see back here, I have my witch hazel is blooming and there are signs that the snowdrops are going to be opening soon. They're there, but they're not opened yet. It's been a little too cold. We're still just at freezing. But we do have the witch hazel, and it's kind of exciting to me because one of the very first paintings I did on a watercolor Wednesday was of a witch hazel, which means that I must be getting close to my one-year anniversary. So I think what I'll do is at the end of the program today, I will show you some of the pictures that I've painted over the, the past year. And, um, and I'm also, I'm gonna be talking about the Watercolor Card Club too. So if you're interested, you can learn more about that. So let's get started. Here's the Witch Hazel. And let's see if I can give you a good view of it. Actually, let's try zooming you in. Here we go, that's a little better for you to see. So this is the, the native witch hazel. There are a lot of cultivars that you can get for your garden in um, an assortment of colors and much showier, larger shapes. But this is actually the native one that is um, such a wonderful pollen source for so many uh, insects and, and birds earlier in the year. And, um, and because I, from time to time, have kept honeybees, I like to have a lot of these early flowering plants around and uh, including, of course, the dandelion, which is uh, a very, very important plant for uh, many of the hungry bees and, and animals that are waking up in the spring. So, um, as you can see, it has this very frilly kind of a, a petal system. It's really kind of wonderful. And deep down and i don't know if you'll be able to see that so well let's get you close here there we go so um the petals are springing from this base here which has a lot of these beautiful kind of rusty crimson accents to it and then of course the bark is this is this lovely kind of a pale brown with all these little knobs and, and features on it. So that's gonna be a lot of fun to paint. Um, we've got a, a little bud on the tip here and here, and then there, there's some, some whorls and knobs and so forth. So there's a lot of interesting features to this plant. So I have some watercolor paper ready to go. This is a piece of the 90 pound hot press paper. I'm just checking to make sure we're live here. Okay, that looks good. There we go. Hi Kelly, hi Deirdre, thank you so much for joining me today. So my watercolor palette just has yellow, red, and blue on it. And there's no need to clean your palette in between uses. All of, all of this paint, that these mixtures that are on here are perfectly good to use. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a spritz to moisten the paint. And I've got my 
watercolor brush. I've got a couple of watercolor containers. And I have my, um, I'll show you what I've got here. Let me just give it a squeeze. I've got a, a kitchen sponge, a clean kitchen sponge. It's got paint on it, but that's all. And um, I also have a, a paper towel, okay? And I think for this one, I'm going to do a vertical. Let me zoom you in so you can see a little better. I'm just going to draw very lightly with pencil to get my design. And I'm going, I'm going to shorten it slightly so that There we go. So my drawing is just it's just to help guide me as to where I want all these different features to be. It's not meant to be a, uh, a portrait of the plant itself. Now here, I wanna raise, I wanna raise this piece up a little closer to the rest of the blossoms so that I can fit it all on the page. And that's about it. Okay, now um, there are some sort of angular bits, but I want to make sure I get those directions. All right. I'm just going to start with a little bit of my yellow. It's got some red mixed into it. That's okay. And I'm just going to start very lightly. Just kind of indicating the areas where these flower petals will be. Wow, it's so cheery to see something yellow and bright. <laughs> it's been a while. Now I'm going to take my, my orange and my blue Still just using those, those three colors, red, yellow, and blue. It's all you need. And I'll start to sketch in that twig. The birds are starting to make springtime sounds. This morning, while I, when I woke up, I could hear them outside my window. The blue jays, in particular, and also there was a there was another bird, and I have no idea what it was, but it, it sang a song. It was so beautiful. I hope it comes back so I can identify it. I'm switching to a smaller brush now. This is a number four, and I'm going to get a mixture of some of the red to get into the base of some of these 
areas. And I'm just, I'm still, I'm just kind of indicating much on that one I think. There we go. So that that is my first pass at the picture. And now I'll go back and I'll begin to develop some of the, the drawing. This bud has a slightly greenish tinge to it, so I get a little bit of that feeling. Are any of you out there seeing any signs of spring where you are? Let me know where you're from. It's always it's always so great to see people tuning in from all across the country and Canada. We still have snow on the ground here, but the this, this snowdrops have been sending up shoots under the snow, and now there are buds on them. So I have a feeling if the temperatures warm up a little bit this week, that next Wednesday we will be painting from the snowdrops. That'll be a lot of fun. There we go. So we're starting to get a little bit of dimension on there. Hey, Ginger, Linda. Oh, you did Persithia. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking when I picked the witch hazel that I should really get some Persithia ready too. Where, where are you, Linda? What, what area do you live in? Sounds like you've got a lot of the same things I have here. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. Now I just want to begin to get some of the specific petals and character of this specimen. So I'm going to take a, a kind of a stronger yellow mixture. I'm using my, my smaller number four brush and I'm just going to pick out a few of these petals and paying attention to the particular direction that they're all going in. They're just wild. They're like, they're like the cheerleaders' pom-poms cheering in the spring. I had a flock of robins out on the lawn. I have a, a little patch of lawn that's sort of a um, south-facing hill. And so it warms up earlier than the rest of the yard. And the robins always come when that grass starts to appear from under the snow. And, um, and they come in a, in a great big flock. 
There must have been 40 or 50 of them out there. It was really exciting. Okay, that's coming along. Now I'm going to take a slightly darker yellow. I'm adding a little bit of red to it, so it's more of an orangey kind of a tone, and I'm just going to go into these kind of deeper places. Now, if you have any questions, please type them in the comments, and I will answer them after I'm done with the video. So I should tell you a little bit about the Watercolor Card Club for, for anybody who's interested in, in painting along. Every month, I select a new subject and I send out a card kit and in that card kit are enough supplies to make four note cards. So you get the card base, the mat, the envelope, and the watercolor paper. And then I create a video and we have a um, a Facebook page that you can share your work and get critiqued. And the cost of the card club, the watercolor card club subscription is $25 a month. And that covers all of the shipping and the tax and packing and everything else. You also have the advantage of, of seeing what everybody else is doing and learning from them. It's a really great group. And the, um, the subscription is billed automatically through PayPal once you sign up. But you can cancel that at any time. You do not have to. You're not obligated to spend any longer than you choose. And so after the video today, I will, I will be posting that information. If you want to check it out before, just go to my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com and you will see a tab there for the Watercolor Card Club. And, um, and there's a button, a link that you can click on that will hook you up. There we go. Okay, so we're getting kind of close to finishing here. I'm just going to work a little bit more on the blossoms. I'm going I'm taking a a violet mixture so I'm just mixing my red and my blue together and I'm keeping it more on the blue side than the red side and I'm putting a little bit of yellow in there just to gray it down a bit and this is going to give me a nice dark accent color. I 
just want to get some of this wonderful detail on the on the branch There's so many so many interesting shapes all right and then i'm gonna just get into those flowers once again this time i'm taking a, a strong bright yellow this is just a pure pure yellow Okay, and the last thing I want to do is to get a little bit of a kind of a, uh, what would you call this, it's sort of a, a dull ochre kind of a mixture. So I'm taking some of that yellow and red and mixing some violet in it. And this is going to give me a kind of a, a shadow tone that I can add sparingly because I don't want to I don't want to tone down the the yellow too much. I want to keep it nice and bright. So I'm just going to put a couple of touches of this here and there just to indicate the shadow areas on some of the petals. It's really, it's, you know, when you're painting something as complicated as this with, with all these frilly little petals, it's really an abstraction. So you have to decide which are the most important aspects of the plant that you want to convey, or, or it doesn't have to be a plant, it could be any subject, but what's important what do you want to convey? And um, for this particular specimen, I, I just, I love the wildness of these crazy directions that all these beautiful little petals go go out in. Now I'm taking I'm taking a very dark red with a touch of blue in it. And that's going to be my accent color. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good. It's just a little sketch. Now next month I'm going to have a special workshop on how to make your own little sketch journal using the, um, the good watercolor paper, a sturdy cover, and a, and a nice closure, and then we're going to decorate it. So stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss that. I'm going to zoom you out a little bit here. I'm going to sign my painting. I'll put my name here. I've got a piece of, of crumb cake and a piece of Daffodil Delight. And the measurements are... Well, first of all, I should tell you that this is half a standard sheet of cardstock, so it is um, eight and a half, eight, five and a half, 
by eight and a half, folded in half to be four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just gonna give that a nice firm press with my bone folder. And then my mats measure four by five and a quarter. And this is three and three quarters by five. So they're just quarter inch increments. And that gives me a nice uh, eighth of an inch reveal as a border. And this is almost dry, not quite. I'll give that another minute. So while that's drying, I'll just mount this onto the card base. And I will have a list of all of the supplies that I'm using. Down below after after the video is over. So there's my card base. I can get a little more glue in there. Okay, and then that looks pretty dry. Now in this particular case, on this paper, I had the natural deckle edge, which I put to the bottom, and that just gives it that wonderful um, added feature. The, the watercolor paper, the, the fine watercolor papers have what's called a deckle. That's the natural edge that's formed when the paper pulp is poured into the screens and when you are tearing your your big sheets up into smaller pieces like this you don't want to cut them you you tear them so that you're kind of imitating that that natural deckle so there is today's picture but I'm going to take a minute and I'm just going to show you some of the uh, pictures that I've done this past year. So let's clear the decks here a little bit. Now, they're in some kind of an order. They're not completely in order. But I have this little card box that I made to keep them in. And this is just some of the earlier ones. But here is the witch hazel that I did last year. And what's what's so funny about this is that I actually used the same mat as I did last year, except that oh no, actually this one is Sahara, this one is Sahara sand. This one is crumb cake, so it's not exactly the same.
but very similar. Here's the snowdrop I did last year for Scythia, daffodil, the magnolias. We're going to have magnolias soon. That'll be exciting. This is a Lenten rose. A, this is a hellebore. The fritillaria. Rhododendrons. Well, that's later in the year. Those are the apples. Here's a, a helianthus. A rose. A clematis. Echinacea. Some chrysanthemums. A hibiscus. Let's see what else we have here. All right, now I'm, I'm kind of getting into fall. We'll save that for another time. Okay, but that gives you an idea of some of the beautiful note cards that you can make with these quick little watercolor studies. And again, if you're interested in, in learning more about the Watercolor Card Club, which is a monthly subscription where you'll do a different picture every month. I'd love to have you join us. Just go to dandelioncottagedesign.com and click on the, the tab that says Watercolor Card Club and there will be a link there where you can sign up and I will send you a packet with all the uh, papers that you'll need to make these beautiful note cards. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful, chilly, very early spring day. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.